This is home. And our roots run as deep as the love we have for this place. Owned by the same Cincinnati company for more than 70 years. And what matters to you matters to us. This is WCPO 9 News. Thank you so much for joining us for WCPO 9 News. I'm Craig McKee. Here's a closer look at some of today's top stories. What started as a police chase Friday ends with a deadly crash. That crash pummeled a convenience store and knocked out power to several homes along West North Bend Road in College Hill. A woman was killed in that crash. The second person is in critical condition. Investigators say it all began in North College Hill with a Dodge Charger speeding south on Hamilton Avenue near Galbraith. It then crossed into Cincinnati, hit the brakes at West North Bend, and then took off recklessly when police tried to stop it. Police say they ended the chase on West North Bend Road. The car, though, crashed and then caught fire a few blocks away near Simpson Avenue. A man accused of raping a Miami University student 16 years ago could face more than 60 years in prison. Lloyd Wendell Ailes is charged with six felonies. He's now pleading guilty to all of them after initially pleading not guilty. Ailes was indicted back in December, and authorities say they used DNA testing, a process that took years to find and arrest him. He's going to be sentenced on June 30th. Well, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and one high school student in Kentucky that has been pushing for mental health support for students got to be part of a ceremonial bill signing. Amira Bowman helped craft House Bill 44. It allows for school districts to accept mental health as a reason for an excused absence. Governor Andy Bashir welcomed her and other student leaders to the Capitol to honor their accomplishments. A settlement means Ohio voters will not get to choose whether to legalize marijuana this year, but it could come around for next year. The coalition to regulate marijuana like alcohol gathered enough signatures to put a measure before lawmakers this year, but there were some questions over timing. State leaders and the coalition came to an agreement. The measure will now be put before lawmakers in January. If they don't act in four months, the group can collect more signatures and put it before voters in the November 2023 election. Hi there, I'm Chief Meteorologist Steve Raleigh. As we look at your weekend forecast, something to note right off the top, we are going to see some scattered showers and storms throughout the weekend, and there is a severe threat associated with those storms. Most likely we'll see it Saturday afternoon and going into Saturday night, and then again very late into Sunday. There is a chance Sunday afternoon. My nine-day forecast then shows how we leave the 80s and drop to the 70s as we head into early next week.